and this is still at 1080p. The GPU is basically maxed out here. I'm not running any V-Sync on Death Stranding side. If you're like me and want to save space, electricity, and cost, then today's guide will be perfect for you. My kids wanted to have a computer for themselves, so I came up with a way to give them that without using up more resources than we needed to. I have this Lenovo ThinkStation P700 with dual Xeon CPUs, 64 gigs of DDR4 ECC RAM, and lots of hard drive space, just waiting to be repurposed in a meaningful way. I was using it as a Plex server, but have since migrated that to a better system and needed another use for this beast because I don't throw things away. Day on Spice Vader, I'm setting up Hyper-V GPU pair virtualization in Windows 11. So what is GPU pair virtualization? I'm going to call it GPU PV for the rest of the video. This allows us to run one physical system and as many virtual machines as we deem capable by our hardware. More specifically, this lets us split the GPU resources much like we can RAM, CPU, and hard drive space traditionally with virtual machines. There are some handy scripts to accomplish this and we're gonna dive in and set this up. First, we'll lay the groundwork and get Windows 11 Pro or above installed. I'm using 24H2 and just breezing through this install. I set up a couple of extra SATA SSDs for the VM storage. Now we'll need to install the Hyper-V role by going to Control Panel, Programs and Features, turn Windows Features on or off, and then select the Hyper-V role. Reboot once that's done. Now we should be ready to start setting up the VMs. After doing some research on the idea, I found that there are some scripts that make this easy to do. James Stringer has the easy GPU PV script that you can modify and set the parameters as you wish. Another project I found, which I'm going to use today, is the Razmataz Interactive Easy GPU PV, which just gives you an interface and allows you to select the options and parameters for the VMs as you walk through the steps. So looking at this interactive easy GPU PV script, we just want to make sure that we have the prerequisites. So we need a desktop computer running Windows 10, blah, blah, blah. We're already set up with Windows 11 24H2, so we're good there. PC with dedicated NVIDIA GPU or AMD GPU. So I went with the RTX 3060 12 gig that I had laying around. So that's installed and the drivers are up to date. We installed Windows 11 using Rufus on a USB drive. I'm gonna take that same ISO image and just place it somewhere I can access it. Uh, virtualization is enabled in the motherboard BIOS and Hyper-V role is already installed, so we're good to go there. The last thing we wanna do is allow PowerShell scripts to run. So let's do that quick. We'll just pop open PowerShell, run it as administrator, and we'll just do set execution policy, unrestricted, hit A for all. I think we should be good there. Now let's get this script. Oh yeah, I should probably get that ISO image like I said I was going to. Okay, to get started with the interactive VZU GV, blah, 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 PV, follow these steps. Make sure your system meets the prerequisites. Yes. Download the interactive easy GPU PV repository and extract it to a folder. So let's do that. Just extract that folder. Search for PowerShell ISC on your computer and run it as administrator. All right, that's all. Let's do PowerShell ISC. Going to open desktop iGPU PV and doing that. Select create new VM with GPU acceleration when prompted and set any required parameters. Once the VM is created, open and sign into Parsec on the VM. I'm probably not gonna do the Parsec stuff. What I'm gonna use instead is use Sunshine and Moonlight to stream. And we're gonna see if that works okay. If not, we'll use Parsec, but I'm gonna try Moonlight since the rest of my systems are using that. And then you're all set and enjoy. So this is saying that this is gonna be a pretty easy process. So let's find out. We'll start this script here. We'll just run the whole script. Uh, run once. Okay, it doesn't like my Windows OS. One eternity later. Okay, so I think I found the part of the script where it's hanging up. Now, I'll be honest, this is running the Windows 11 24H2 LTSC edition. I've installed it with the IoT Enterprise license. 
Uh, you can look up mass grave to figure that out and see how that works, but I'm not going to go into detail on that. I ran that on this system because this is an old system that doesn't support Windows 11 natively. The other reason I didn't want to do this, or I wanted to use LTSC, was because um, a lot is not going to change on updates. It'll kind of act like a server edition. I'm hoping to not break as much with and being able to control updates and just kind of have a de-bloated version to work with. Anyway, I'm going to try to update this code here and just change enterprise to IOT, uh, capital S, just to make that the same as this. We'll see if that allows it to go through. Now, if you're just running regular Windows 11 Pro, you shouldn't need to do any of this. Okay, system is checking. There we go. Now it's saying system is compatible. Available actions, create new VM with GPU acceleration. That's basically what we want to start with. We can look at the other options here. Pass through GPU acceleration to Hyper-V VM. Uh, upgrade VM's GPU drivers, remove GPU acceleration. So these are all settings that are for like managing after the fact, but one is what we're really after. Enter virtual machine name. So this is gonna be for my boy Isaiah. So let's call it Isaiah VM. Virtual machine files location. So change default virtual machine files location. I'm going to push yes. It doesn't look like it's doing a lot right now. I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out. A few moments later. So if you open up Hyper-V Manager, go to action, and then go to Hyper-V settings, you can see where the virtual hard disks and virtual machines are set to go by default. So I'm just going to change this manually. I like to put it in VMC and we'll select that folder and then for virtual hard disks VHD and select that folder. I'm going to change this for now, apply it. That way the script will pull that default from Hyper-V Manager or Hyper-V settings. And now it's pulling the correct default so hit uh, return to skip, return to skip. I want to use the full drive space for the most part. It's 476, so let's do 450 gigs. So 450, and then we're going to specify the amount of RAM. So let's do 16. And I do not want dynamic memory. I want it to just have access. Specify the number of virtual processors. I intended to give six to each of these. I already set up the virtual switches, so this is something that you might want to do. And it's just as simple as going to the virtual switch manager and then creating an external switch. When you create a switch, just if you only have one ethernet adapter, just pick external network and then your main ethernet that it's hooked up to. I have a second port on this ThinkStation P700, so I'm gonna use port two. So we're gonna set two and set virtual network switch to external bridged network mode. Actually, I'm just going to hit return to skip. Okay, printing a list of compatible GPUs. From reading, I've learned that you could just choose on a desktop GPU, you could just choose one for the NVIDIA. But on Windows 10, you have to choose zero for auto. So I'm going to press return to the, use the default. Specify the percentage of dedicated VM GPU resource to pass. We This person picked 50%. You don't want to set it to 100%. If you want to modify the percentage, I would recommend creating a new VM with the script and the, then just assigning the disk of the old one. So we kind of have to choose wisely when we're setting this up. So my ultimate goal is to run the main OS and two VMs. So I should be picking 33% if I'm thinking of it this way. Let's just go with 33 and see what happens. So it wants the OS image. I put that in ISO. So I'm going to pick that here. Okay, it looks like it's mounted it. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I like to use the uh, number two option here. And we're going to call this Isaiah. Enable auto log on to guest OS. Uh, yes, I'm going to stick with that. Copy host OS regional settings locale. Yes, I will. Enable numlock at logon, sure. Available remote desktop apps. Uh, I'm gonna use RDP and that's it. Virtual machine is creating and may take a long time. So we finally got to here. It's doing the thing, letting it run. No, 
Okay, looks like it's trying to start the VM. There were some errors. I don't know if that's going to cause any problems, though. I guess we'll find out. Now I can kind of spot check and see if this has been loading up the correct drive with everything. Pop into here, looks like VM's got VHDX file, that's good. And it's auto-logging in, so we'll give it a couple more minutes to see what this looks like. Okay, we've got a desktop. If all went well, the virtual machine will have started. In a few minutes, it will load the Windows desktop. When it does, install remote desktop mode motor client and connect to the machine using username and password you set. Uh, we'll check and see, we've got 450 gigs, that's perfect. We show the DVD drive, that's also great. Okay, nothing bad so far. And we've got Hyper-V and an RTX 3060. So that's exactly what we're looking for. What I'm gonna do is do a little polishing to this, set it up, install a few apps and some games, and then we're gonna test it out and see how the performance is how much we lose as far as it's being split up between the two. Okay, we're switching over to Death Stranding. This is running directly on the Hyper-V host. And as you can see, we're about 80 to 83 FPS. This is unlocked frame rate, 1080p, default preset, no DLSS. And right now the VMs are idle, they're running, but they're not doing anything. So they're on and idle. This is just a frame rate test of what the main machine can do directly. We've got about 45 to 50% CPU usage and about 80% on the GPU load. So let's switch over and add a VM and see if the performance changes. I've got two people playing. We have Left 4 Dead going on the Isaiah VM, and we have my daughter playing Breath of the Wild over on her VM. And on the main host, where we have Death Stranding running natively, the way that pair of virtualization works is the host will get the most priority, and the VMs will have less priority. So as we can see, the two processors are working pretty hard, I mean, we are running two VMs as well as the host and in this game, but even with all that, yeah, we were getting about 85 FPS with just the host running, but now we're getting 53 FPS, and this is still at 1080p. The GPU is basically maxed out here. The RAM usage is high, but again, I have 16 gigs per VM. Uh, the remaining free RAM is going to go towards the host. Uh, but we do see in the, on the Left 4 Dead side, we're getting about eh, anywhere from 96 to 101 FPS. And if we V-Sync cap that, that would make this experience way more playable. On the Breath of the Wild side here, that one has been capped to 30 FPS at 720p. So native Wii U semi rendering. And... What do you think, Hope? Is that playable? Yeah, it's still playable. It's still playable. She, say, she seems to be having fun. So if we can balance this out a little more between all three of these, then I don't think there should be any problem. The 3060 is a very capable GPU for this, um, and it's power efficient. So the other VMs are running. Board power draw, 106 watts. PCIe slot power, 30 watts. 8-pin power, 78 watts. So there you have it, it is possible. It is doable. And you don't even have to run it on the latest and greatest hardware. RTX 3060s are relatively cheap. You can pick them up for 300 or less, even with this market in 2025 where everybody wants the 50 series. The 30 series is still a viable option. This is just 1080p on all these. So 1080p on the host, 1080p on the VMs. Uh, I don't think 4K would be a good thing to try. The 3060 can't really do 4K. Anyway, that's all I had for today's video. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. Be sure to like, subscribe, share it, tell others about it. 
You have a great week. God bless. Take care. Here's the ridiculous setup. This is HDMI off of the Hyper PV host. This is Moonlight streaming. This is the controller hooked up to it. This is a VNC view of both sides. And I'm recording it all running off this bad boy. And the Hope's got Breath of the Wild being streamed on a hacked Switch.